Kia ora guys, welcome back to the 3.3 video series. This video is about entrainment of the biological clock by a Zeitgeber. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the function of a biological clock. You should be able to discuss timing mechanisms in animals linked to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, SCN. You should be able to explain the adapted value of biological clocks. And finally, you should be able to describe examples of endogenous rhythms entrained by environmental cues, i.e. the Zeitgeber. As always, you will have some vocabulary attached to this um, new concept, and the vocabulary will be in bold and in caps to really highlight that key vocab as we read through the content. These are the Education Perfect and SciPad tasks that are associated to this concept, and here's the Quizlet embedded in Lemonade that will help you learn these vocab. So the biological rhythms we observe in animals is the result of an exogenous factor, exogenous meaning external, called a Zeitgeber. This Zeitgeber interacts with an endogenous factor, endogenous meaning internal, called the biological clock. Basically, the Zeitgeber, which is again the environmental cue or the rhythm, resets this internal biological clock so that the animal's internal timing system can be synchronized with the environment. The summary diagram brings that together. So here we've got the exogenous, external, Zeitgeber or environmental cues. This could be light or temperature and other social factors that are outside of the organism. These exogenous or external Zeitgebers interact with the endogenous factor, the internal factor known as the biological clock, and it's located inside of the animal. When these two interact, they produce a response, which is called the biological rhythm. We covered biological rhythms in the previous video. These biological rhythms could be um, annual, they could be daily circadian rhythms, they could be tidal rhythms, and so on. And these responses, these rhythms, change the activity or the behavior of an animal. It could change body temperatures, it could change the hormones made by the animal. Let's take some time to watch this TED Ed video. In 1962, a cave explorer named Michel Seif started a series of experiments where he isolated himself underground for months without light or clocks. He attached himself to electrodes that monitored his vital signs and kept track of when he slept and ate. When C finally emerged, the results of his pioneering experiments revealed that his body had kept to a regular sleeping-waking cycle. Despite having no external cues, he fell asleep, woke up, and ate at fixed intervals. This became known as a circadian rhythm, from the Latin for about a day. Scientists later found these rhythms affect our hormone secretion, how our bodies process food, and even the effects of drugs on our bodies. The field of sciences studying these changes is called chronobiology. Being able to sense time helps us do everything from waking and sleeping to knowing precisely when to catch a ball that's hurtling towards us. We owe all these abilities to an interconnected system of timekeepers in our brains. It contains the equivalent of a stopwatch telling us how many seconds elapse, a clock counting the hours of the day, and a calendar notifying us of the seasons. Each one is located in a different brain region. So I recommend that you guys watch each of these three videos that provide a really great summary on how exogenous factors and endogenous factors, so the Zeitgeber and biological clock, interact together to produce a response, which is the biological rhythm. We're not going to watch these now, but you can watch them in your own time, and they're found in Lemonade, our classroom website. So what is this biological clock? A biological clock is an an endogenous, so internal, timing system that helps to control the physiological responses and activities of an animal. The biological clock helps to control endogenous, so internal rhythms like heart activity, 
hormone secretion, blood pressure, oxygen consumption by our cells, and the metabolic rate. These are all physiological um, responses. They're all things that are happening inside our bodies, inside our cells. These endogenous rhythms, established by the biological clock, will continue even in the absence of environmental cues, like day and night. Although the period or duration of the rhythm may be slightly different to the environmental rhythm. But when the endogenous rhythms controlled by the biological clock become out of sync with the environment, various long-term or short-term disorders can occur, like jet lag. Now, biological clocks have an adaptive function because they help anticipate environmental changes and they prepare the animal's body for activities that will predictably follow. Let's watch this video talking more about the animal's biological clock. Just as the whole of nature is governed by order and life unfolds at its annual, monthly, weekly or daily rhythms, your body through its functions is perfectly correlated with the daily rotation of the earth around the sun. Inside you there is a biological clock that helps you anticipate changes and adapt to the regular day-night rhythm, creating the foundations for your optimal functioning. In contrast, your well-being is jeopardized when you're brutally interfered with by external factors that are no longer correlated with this internal clock. For example, when you eat during sleep hours, or when you work at night, or when you change time zones, you're hormonally unprepared, and the activity of the genes regulating your metabolic clock is suppressed. As a result, you gain weight, your blood pressure increases, amplifying stress in a vicious circle that predisposes your body to inflammation, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. What exactly determines this daily rhythm? Firstly, the pineal gland, located in the center of the brain, produces a hormone called melatonin. Stimulated by darkness and inhibited by light, almost absent the entire day, melatonin is produced starting with 9 p.m., preparing you for the night's sleep. In the opposite direction, cortisol, the stress hormone, is produced by the adrenal glands, under the control of another unit in your brain responsible for the biological clock the hypothalamus. The synthesis of cortisol follows the same daily rhythm, having its peak around 6 to 8 a.m. before you wake up, just when you need energy to start your activities. It sustains the tension in your blood vessels and increases the level of glucose that will be your everyday starting fuel. Then the cortisol undergoes a decline throughout the day, becoming undetectable at night during your first hours of sleep resuming its cycle to reach its peak again during the next morning. Other episodes of cortisol addition of small amplitude occur during the day when you eat or when you make physical effort. Thus, your inner clock adapts with perfect precision your physiology during the different phases of the day, adjusting essential functions, your body's metabolism and temperature, hormone levels, your sleep, and even your behavior. So what you needed to get out of that video is that the biological clock is located in your brain and it controls other organs that release hormones that control um, biological rhythms in your body. These biological rhythms prepare you for what's about to come. When this biological clock is out of sync with the environment, it can cause long-term disorders because the physiology in your body is not working right. So here are some functions of the biological clock in animals beyond humans. The biological clock can predict and prepare for events in the environment. So for example, hedgehogs store food reserves as fat for periods of slowing down or hibernation during cold months. The biological clock also synchronizes migration, reproduction, or social activities. So for example, gannets use this biological clock to gather around at a certain time of the year and at certain places of the year during their migration. The biological clock also synchronizes circadian and annual rhythms with changes in the environment. For example, in Tuatara and other reptiles, they synchronize with the day and night cycles so that when the sun comes up, they're able to bask in the sun and warm up their bodies. 
Finally, the biological clock is also used to know the time, and it uses this for navigation and sun compass orientation. For example, honeybees need to know the time of day and the position of the sun so that they can orient themselves in space. And we previously learned that they need to know the position of the sun in order to navigate and communicate a source of food to other members in that um, hive. This video here also talked about where the biological clock is located. The location of the biological clock varies between organisms. In birds, reptiles, and amphibians, it's located in what is called the pineal gland in the brain. In insects, each cell has its own biological clock. But in mammals, like humans, the biological clock is located in the hypothalamus. So in this diagram here, the pineal gland is this small gland here. The pineal gland secretes the sleep-inducing hormone melatonin in the dark. Melatonin production is suppressed by bright light. So can you see how using phones at night could mess up with this hormone melatonin secretion by the pineal gland? For most humans, the biological clock runs at about a 25 and a half hour day. To keep it synchronized with the 24 hour day cycle of day and night in the environment, it needs to be reset each day. And it does this by reacting to outside stimuli, so exogenous stimuli, such as light and dark and meal times. In humans, the biological clock is made up of a collection of cells in the hypothalamus called the suprachiasmatic nucleus in short, SCN, and this is located just behind the eyes. Light from the eyes stimulates the nerve pathways to the SCN and regulates its activity. So once um, the suprachiasmatic nucleus is, ex is exposed to light, it communicates with the hypothalamus and the pineal gland to promote wakefulness. It raises the body temperature, it releases stimulating hormones, and it suppresses melatonin production to wake you up and get you started with your day. I just want to bring your attention to the sentence in red. The biological clock needs to be reset each day and it's reset by outside stimuli. This outside stimuli is called a Zeitgeber and the process of resetting the biological clock by the Zeitgeber is called entrainment. Entrainment of the biological clock is adaptive because it contributes to fitness and survival by ensuring the success of really important activities such as mating, birth, germination, foraging, so looking for food, and periods of torpor and dormancy. Here is an illustration that I got from the Biozone textbook or workbook. It's a simple mechanism for biological clocks. So here is a Zeitgeber, and this is a picture of the sun. The sun, which comes out during the day, entrains the biological clock. And that means this environmental cue of the sun synchronizes the biological clock with the environment. The biological clock being in the suprachiasmatic nucleus of mammals. Now the output of this is that the biological clock produces internal changes that matches the changes in the environment. This leads to a change in biological rhythm. So there's a change in body temperature, there's a change in hormones secreted, uh, there's a drop in melatonin. And all of that causes this rabbit to change its activity throughout the day. And remember that rabbits are crepuscular animals, so they are most active when the sun is rising, so dawn, and dusk when the sun is setting. So that's all I've got to say about entrainment of the biological clock by a Zeitgeber. By now you should be able to describe the function of a biological clock, discuss timing mechanisms in mammals linked to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, the SCN, explain the adaptive value of biological clocks, and describe examples of endogenous rhythms entrained by environmental cues. Don't forget to watch these videos here on Lemonade, okay? It will help you gain a deeper understanding on the biological clock and how it's entrained by the Zeitgeber to produce a biological rhythm. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.